What's the easiest choice you can make? Window instead of middle seat? Picking a vendor who sends a great gift basket? Outsourcing business tasks you hate? What about selling with Shopify? Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash try. Go to shopify.com slash try now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash try. I am sipping on juice. But um, welcome. What's going on, baby? Is this your first time on Stereo Streets? Yes, it is. What? Popping yes, that it is. tonight? <laughs> okay. Um, well, welcome to Stereo. Um, what's up, Jacktivist? Uh, we have a audience member down there. Um, okay, so basically we are live. Mm-hmm. Um Anybody could come in and listen to us talk. Uh, this is being recorded automatically. At the top, you see the topic. Um, you see the hashtag. And we can add in more people at the top. But before I add in people, because there's two people that has have requested to join the show, I wanted to basically give us room to introduce the show who you are, your show. Um, below, if you look down at the screen, there's the mute button with the the mic with the cross in it. Yeah. You could play background music while we talk. I never use it, but you could do that's an option. Okay. Um, you can see messages that come in at the bottom where there's that talk screen. And then there's a share screen where you can sh- save a video clip you can mm-hmm. share it to uh, contacts in your phone. You could copy the link. You could share it to Instagram and all of that stuff. Okay. And then, what's up, Mike? And then the three dots at the top. I could take off the request to have people join us. Um, mm-hmm. There's an option for external microphone. It's not necessary, but some people like to use it. Okay. And... Um, that's about it and then once we're done we can basically leave the show at the bottom and it'll give you the option to record it once we're done but um it's it's gonna be a good one so I'm going to basically put on my cozy womb podcast hat because this is more (laughs) this is more childlike topic mom topic dad topic um right so the reason why I picked you is because you're a daddy in real life, not just the bedroom. Okay. Facts. <laughs> All right. And um, I feel like we have kids and so it'll be a good perspective from my point of view and from your point of view. And I feel like the discussion of um, men telling women who are single, they may or may not be in a relationship but verbatim saying I don't want to have kids not necessarily I don't want to have kids with you but I don't want to have kids or I'm not ready for kids but we are sexually engaging with each other Uh I think that doesn't get talked about enough one because men aren't aren't like big on complaining or nagging two after a woman is pregnant what's the point of him saying I told you I didn't want kids. This is done. Like the baby is in her and now she has mm-hmm. the power. And right. so um I just want to like deep dive into that part because mm-hmm. I think a lot of women get to skip over you know what a man wanted. Um Right. You know what was actually the consent of you carrying his child that he did not want 
to get this far with you right. for whatever his reason is that's his right but at the same time I want to talk about the responsibility factor on a man and a woman I want to talk about you know what precautions are there I want to talk about you know what I sent you today that we'll talk about a little bit later um, okay. about situations that pop up later after a woman is pregnant and a man doesn't want to be a dad period or maybe he doesn't want to be a dad again um, so I wanted to talk about that but Juice let these people know who you are what your podcast is and what you be doing out here uh, well uh, for, the, for, for the people who don't know uh, I'm Juice um, the host of the Chilling with Juice podcast uh, brand new episodes weekly every Friday at 1am um, I am a black male who says whatever the hell he wants to whomever the hell he wants to um i like to stir the pot shake the table if you will (laughs) (laughs) um i make fun of a lot of things probably a lot of things that people probably shouldn't laugh at but Mm um i'm the host of the chilling with juice podcast that's me baby right and you had some topics this week that I'm just like, eh! <laughs> I love, I love, I love the thought provoking, right? Yes, but um, I love it because it makes people think, it makes people question like their motives, and maybe I have been going about X, Y, and Z wrong. Right. Um, so my name is Shein. I'm from She Gets a Podcast and Cozy Womb Podcast and Loud Mouth Stereo Podcast and the Real Relationship Report Podcast and one more that's a book club yes I'll be out here in these podcast streets but um tonight I'm gonna put on my mom hat I'm gonna put on my woman hat um not because it's convenient but because I'm I'm that's what I am all the time okay we can't we can't all be out here like um what you call it? Um, like what? What's, what's her name? Ooh. Young Ma. Young Ma <laughs> out here. She, she, choosing to be a woman when it's convenient. You know what I'm saying? When it's convenient, yeah. When it's convenient. <laughs> <laughs> but um, okay, so my I have I have eleven questions to okay. engage this topic. Okay. Um, to the two people that. Uh, requested to be in the show I'll add you in a little bit later but I just want to get into the topic a little bit more um, with Juice first okay so the first question I have is for you were any of your kids planned out and when I say planned out I'm talking about you purposely met this woman y'all had a relationship Um, y'all feel like y'all got to a point where we wanted to have kids and we wanted to have kids with each other and you planned out the when you were going to have the child what you were going to do next and all of that were any of your children planned out no none of my children were planned out okay same none of my kids were planned out but at the same time which leads me into question number two what was your preventative measure of not having kids (laughs) <laughs> honestly like honestly like what was it uh, honestly I took no preventative measures <laughs> to... <laughs> no preventative measure so there, there there couldn't have been any uh, it could have been any argument on my end as far as not one not wanting or how did this happen or th- yeah. there's no way that this could be no there, there, there was none of that so for her with the idea of being a mom what was her level of it before she became one like did she ever say to you like "Mm, I I think I'll be ready for kids by such and such age or I don't want kids right now so no we never we never had that conversation it was what listen I'm telling you listen as far because I have I have uh, I have two I have um, a daughter and I have a son. My daughter's the oldest, so she's with one mom, and my mm-hmm. son is with another mom. Okay. I was a I was I was a teenage dad, but my my daughter's sixteen, so we ain't had no conversation about shit. We we did it. It happened, and that's what it was, right? Okay. Now with my son's mom, we were in a relationship, but even and even being in that relationship, we still never had 
to talk about having kids of our own. It was one of those mm. things. When, let me tell you how I found out that um, she she was pregnant with my son. Um, okay. I was at, I was at work one night and we were in the middle of texting. Um, I think we we were texting something. I set the phone down. The phone went to sleep. I go back to the phone and there's a picture of a pregnancy test. Oh my god! You talk about somebody's not not even scared shitless, just nervous as hell. Like, fam, I think we were talking about breakfast cereal or something. Then all of a sudden you come back with a positive pregnancy test. You know, mm-hmm. so we never had any discussion about it until that point and at that point it's really no need to have, in my opinion I guess it was no need to have the conversation because the, mm-hmm. the baby was in there the, ba- it, the baby was coming it was you know, you know what I mean like you said the baby was in there <laughs> <laughs> the baby was in there you know the baby was the baby was going to come the baby was going to be here and I and and even at even at that at that point we never said uh, uh, we didn't want or what are we going to do or anything like that it was kind of yeah. understood that now we about to have another one, you know. Okay, so looking back, what would you have done differently before the pregnancy test came to either have a conversation or prevent that from happening when it happened? I definitely probably would have asked her, uh, uh, is she interested in being a mom again for sure? Mm-hmm. Um, preventative measures. Probably a condom. <laughs> probably uh, a condom. <laughs> <laughs> probably a condom. But mm. even e- even with the surprise of just seeing the pregnancy test, it was never. I never got that feeling e- e- with either one of them. It was mm-hmm. like, yo, I don't want to do this show. I can't do this. Like, it, I, I never got scared. Never got nervous. It was never a thing where I was even thinking about remotely asking her to not have this child or you know take a plan b or an, an abortion anything like that yeah like I, none, none of that ever crossed my mind mm. so i was in a sense i was with the shits you know yeah that closed mouth man is wicked okay oh, for so... sure <laughs> <laughs> all right so mine mine kind of played out my second kid kind of played out with the pregnancy test picture text not because Mm -hmm. I wanted to but because I found out by myself um, after a week of shenanigans Uh with him and it wasn't that we were trying to have a baby it was more so we've been doing this like this for over a decade I've never had a pregnancy scare. You've never slipped up. We've never had to get a plan B. I trust that you know what you're doing. And I trust that we are on the same page. Like we're not trying to make a kid. But at the same time, I always told Ari's dad, since I met him when I was 18, that I'm not the type of woman that will be perfectly healthy and perfectly sane and responsible in life and know what I'm doing sexually that can possibly create a life and end up pregnant and get an abortion I just I always knew that wasn't me and we always had like it's not like a whole conversation but it's like just let me remind you just let me remind you randomly and it because it never happened it was just kind of like a brush off right so from 18 to Arya is four now. So when I was 29, <clears throat> the Lord laughed at us. Okay. <laughs> the Lord laughed at us and he was like, oh, so y'all keeping up y'all shit. Okay. Uh-huh. And we had like a week of just doing us. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. You know, wake up, go to work, get off of work. What you doing later? All right. I'm going to go to my house, get my stuff, and I'm going to come to your house. Right. The next day, same shit. I'm going to go to the liquor store, go to my house, get my stuff, come to your house. Wake up, mm-hmm. go to work. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I didn't we didn't think nothing of it, but because there were brown there was brown liquor involved. Oh, you know how that go. Man, because you know there was brown liquor involved and no cups. 
Uh, <laughs> I, I don't even know when it happened. I don't know how it happened. I don't know what position I was in. I just know it was some of the best sleep I ever gotten after being worked. Okay? <laughs> and um, so when I found out after that, fast forward, when I found out that I was pregnant with Ari, he he lived like 25 minutes from my house. And it was like, I was, this is how I knew. Women know their bodies, okay? And if women don't know their bodies enough to be like, something's not right, then they don't need to be doing nothing with nobody as far as like sexually because it's very important. Um, right. I was getting headaches. I was working out. I was um, I was hella emotional. I was crying on commercials juice. Um, oh, I would watch movies and I'll be like crying, bawling. And yeah. I'm just like, dog, what is going on? And I never get headaches for nothing. Right. And I was like, I was like, let me get a pregnancy test just to see. And um, Ari, I had after Anya. So I was, mm. I was, I was kind of like, you know, kind of hip to not feeling right. And right. I peed on that stick and that stick said pregnant. Lord have mercy. And I'm just like, dog, this man is about to flip his shit. This mm. man is about to um, be 40 soon. Mm-hmm. And he he about to have a new baby. What's up, baby daddy? Um, I see you. I'm gonna bring you up soon. <laughs> so I'm just like, oh my god. I was like, how do I tell him? So I'm texting him. I'm just like, hey. I was like, when you gonna be able to come by? He was like, maybe Tuesday. So I was like, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna tell him Tuesday. Tuesday came and I was like, you still coming? He was like, um, yeah. What's up? I said. Nothing. I just want to know if you coming or not. <laughs> I, I, my, my goal was like, I do not want to tell you that I'm pregnant over the phone. I right. do not want to tell you that I'm pregnant through text. Like, I feel like for what this is, is too impersonal. And so, right. but I didn't tell him that. He knew nothing. So he was like texting me. And you know how you see the three dots moving? So uh-huh. he was texting me and I'm just like, uh... He was like, man, I'm in the truck. It's raining, but the truck is acting funny, so I'm going to have to turn around and go back. I was like, oh, my God. So I text, oh, my God. And he was like, what is it? He was like, what is wrong? I was like, oh. And I would text, and I would stop texting. And I would text, and I would stop texting. I said, fuck it. So I went in the bathroom, and I took a picture of the test. Ooh, Juice. Yeah, yeah, I know it. When I, I know when it. I, I know it. When I sent that picture, you saw, oh my fucking god, in text that you saw dot dot, then you saw it go back, <laughs> then you saw dot dot. He was like, man, he was like, you got to be kidding me. I was like, dog. I said, I did not want to tell you through text, but your truck is messed up, and I don't want to sit here and be the only one thinking about this. Yeah, mind you, I've known this man for 16 plus years. We've dealt with each other in that way for 16 plus years. Um, like, sir, this is the Lord giving us our karma, okay? Um, yeah, for playing around for so for so listen, long. Listen, listen, no goals, no real commitment. We just, <laughs> we just. Like each raw other, dogging. like raw this. dogging. And so, um, so he was like, "Man, I can't have no baby right now." I'm just like, "Dog, how many years have I told you? How many decades have has this been talked about? Like, you already know. You just gotta brace yourself." He was like, "Man, I can't have no baby right now." So that was pissing me off because that's all he kept saying. But See, I, and I was gonna like, I, I was gonna ask you how after hearing that, like how did that make you feel? That shit pissed me off, Juice. It pissed me off because, sir, I've been telling you this since I was 18. I'm about to be 30. You know what I'm saying? If yeah. if you felt like if you felt like for sure if that happened, I feel like we should have been more preventative. But I think it was the shock that oh shit this is really a factor right now Mm -hmm. and 
he's about to see like his whole his whole world blow up in his face because we wasn't in a relationship he still had a girlfriend yeah. right and he already yeah. had he already had a kid at that time um she was going into she was in her teen age you know what I'm saying so I think for him he was thinking like oh I'm about to be in my 40s I'm about to be you know completely away from like the little kid what's up E-Ruth the little kid um factor you know yeah. and and I feel like that was like a shock in his face and then he was going to have to explain the fact that oh you know that girl that was 18 that I said I, we were just friends or I wasn't dealing with like that now I'm gonna have to mm-hmm. tell my girlfriend that we still been dealing with each other on a sexual level even all the times I told you that I wasn't so it was like all of his lies was gonna blow up in his face and you can't hide no baby right and you can't hide no baby so um so that was how that happened and then with Anya that's my uh my first kid Mm -hmm. uh Anya I say to everybody that Anya is my mom's my mom's kid. Mm-hmm. Let me explain. Let go away, Anya. Yeah. <laughs> I did raise you, and so I um. <laughs> she's so nosy. So I said. So I, I always tell people that Anya is my mom's kid because um, I I, I graduated college when I was when I was twenty or twenty one. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I was living in New York, and I lived in New York for six years. And I was like, you know, I'm gonna live here. I'm gonna get a few internships. I'm gonna work for some footwear designers, and I'm gonna, you know, just stay here and just get me right. And then right. it got to a point where I got hella lonely, and I felt like New York is not all that was cracked up to be. New York is like, there's a lot of creative people in New York, but it's a lot of just BS when it comes to like creatives so you could be right. talented you can have the experience but if your family doesn't come from money if you can do something for the company as far as financially or mm-hmm. or benefit in that way and you're not you're not uh, a celebrity they really mm-hmm. want you to do everything for nothing and I, I, I was seeing that my friends that went to school and got their bachelors and their masters were working at Macy's. Wow. I was like, um, do you see these that's, school loans that we got paid yeah. at? Like, this that, is that's not gonna crazy cut it. Shit. And I was working, I was working three jobs while I was living in New York. Um, my apartment was basically my closet and where I took a shower. Most of the time I was always at work. I never checked my bank account because I always had checks going in that shit. Um, and then it got to a point where um, I went to go visit my mom and my grandfather died right uh, I was in a relationship with somebody I went to college with he was already out of college he was living in LA I was living in New York it was a decision of was I going to move to LA or was he going to move to New York <clears throat> as far as like lifestyle he was more established in his career um so he had more options for me i can't afford to move across the united states this right. man was like i don't care i will pay to move your stuff all the way over here i just need to know if you want to be in la first of all i'm an east coast girl i'm from <laughs> philly i get on the train i get on the bus or i walk to my destination mm-hmm. right or yeah. i take a cab in la you drive or you die. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, dog, I have no license. Um, and I, I didn't, I wasn't comfortable with completely depending on a man. And we were basically like stuck at a fork in the road where he didn't feel like I was saying the right things for him to have faith in the relationship for me to move all the way to LA. He felt right. like if I move all the way to LA, I was going to wake up one day and be like, I don't want to be here. And my thing is like, I can't be in a relationship with a man who doesn't have any faith in us in the relationship to be in the relationship. And I'm not moving all the way 
to LA where I know nobody right. and the relationship is questionable and I got to depend on you financially to move around um, and all of this other shit it was just too much so we it wasn't like a, an initial breakup but it was like we we stopped there is a pause at that right. same time in the pause my grandfather died mm-hmm. and I instantly was like grieving and I told him, I'm just like, my, my grandfather died. But at the same time, I didn't know if we were t- still together or not. And this mm-hmm. nigga fixed his mouth to be like, yeesh. Huh? That's it. He was on the phone and he said, yeesh. That's it. That's All right. Keep that in mind. So I, I, um, I, uh, I had text, um, my ex, which is Ari's dad, and I was like, I was like, my grandfather passed away, and he was like, he was like, I'm sorry to hear that. He was like, what do you need? I said, I need a flight to go to Philly so I could go to the funeral. This man sent me the money for the flight. Um, my mom got a flight. We went to Philly. We had the funeral, and then all of a sudden, my mind went into like uh, panic mode, where mm-hmm. I was grieving my relationship that I felt like I poured into for two and a half years was basically going to shit. Um, yeah. I didn't have, I didn't have enough. Um, I didn't have enough want to start from scratch with somebody. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, if I start from scratch with somebody that I probably have to wait three more years to have a kid. Um, I'm in the middle of deciding if I want to stay in New York or move. I don't know where I'm moving to now because I don't even know if I'm in a relationship. Right. And I was like, who's the next important person in my family? And I said, my mom. Mm-hmm. Okay, keep this in mind. So the relationship is questionable that I had. Mm-hmm. Um, I still had like communication with my ex. Um, and my grandfather died which is like the last no he wasn't the last but he was like my only grandparent left what right okay hold on um and i'm just like i felt like what if my mom passes away and i'm the last of her five kids and she doesn't have a grandchild for me Mm -hmm. and i started to feel guilty that I spent like my 20s worrying about myself and work and my career and I didn't want to be one of those people who allowed their career to dictate what their life looked like Right. so um, there was a lot of family around at that time or at the funeral of course and friends of the family and then there was this guy there that I knew always had a crush on me but every Mm -hmm. time every time you know I would find out about I didn't know him personally, but mm-hmm. everybody would be like, oh, he at the house. He keep asking your brother about your picture. He he like looking through your stuff. He looking at your artwork, all of this stuff. I'm just like, me and this person has never had words. I was just like, who is this guy? Right. And um and my um uh, my um my brother was like no, you're not talking to him. You know, <laughs> your brother's your brother's gonna be like, you know, he's not good enough or whatever all the time. Right. And um, and so I was grieving, but at the same time, I wanted something or somebody to keep my mind off of my panic mode. And my panic mode was like, my mom's like, she's she's older, she's easily sick, she takes 13 pills a day. Mm-hmm. And I'm the last of her kids that doesn't have a kid. And I and I would die inside if my mom didn't experience one of my kids before she passed away. Right. And so I went into panic mode. I'm just like, shit. I was like, I'm in the middle of a transition in my life. I'm mm-hmm. done with college. So it's not like I'm flunking out of college. I lived in New York for six years. I'm in the career I wanted to be in. Um, mm-hmm. Money is not a problem for me. Right. Uh, I'm not in a relationship. And I don't want a relationship because right now I'm on some like, fuck that relationship shit. That shit is a hell of a gamble. Right. Fuck that shit. I just want to fuck on something. 
Okay. And so, and so I basically I took advantage of I took advantage of me not having any feelings towards anybody for real. Um me not having any possibility to be anything different with my ex and the relationship that I thought was in good standing went to shit. And I'm just like, fuck it. I'm I'm not purposely going to deal with this this new person uh, to have a kid but I'm not going to prevent if a child happens okay okay so that's how Anya happened okay Mm -hmm. and let me tell you something I can't say what I want to say because she's nosy but (laughs) but her father is only good for two things and it's that I believe I heard that yeah I've heard it I've heard it it's that and cooking okay and um, <laughs> that man, that man could cook his ass off, okay. And uh, yes, there was brown liquor involved with Anya too, okay. Mm-hmm. So that's how I had my two kids. So when I say like Anya is my mom's kid, I'm not saying that I didn't want to have Anya. No, I completely get it. But I, I, I did Anya for my mom. Right. Okay. I didn't know if I was going to have another kid. I didn't know if I was going to be in a relationship to have another kid. I didn't know if my mom was going to be around. I just was like, here, boom, right. you got it. Bam. Right. And so when it comes to like um, men not wanting kids, none of them ever told me, I don't want no kids. Mm-hmm. I know, I know we doing this, but I don't want no kids. I feel like it was something that they wouldn't mind happening because they knew who I was mm-hmm. and they knew that I was responsible and they knew that, you know, if we don't have shit, we have like uh, friendship. We have, right. you know, something to fall back on and it's cool. We don't hate each other. It's not toxic over here. Mm-hmm. It's just like real deal. But I think the initial shock for Arya's dad was like, his life was going to be all out in the open. Yeah. And then for Anya's dad, it was like, I knew I wasn't looking for a relationship with Anya's dad. I knew he was young. I knew I was responsible enough to handle it all if I had to. <clears throat> and so when I found out that I was uh, pregnant with Anya, I, I told him and I was like, hey, I was like, you can either be 100% in or you don't need to be a part of this at all. But right. I got it. But I got it. Right. And and he was like, no. He was like, I want to be a part of it. But at the same time, he's young and immature. So when Anya grows up, I have to explain to her that how I picked her dad was irresponsible. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I knew I had me and I knew I had me a village behind me. Right. Of people who want to let me fail with a kid. And mm-hmm. I worked with that over not the not having the possibility of her so I think a lot of times when women get pregnant for men who they don't really have relationships with they don't think about am I responsible enough to to have a kid and do it myself they don't think about do I have a village they don't think about do I actually like this man do I actually like this person a lot of a lot of it today is very glamorized where they feel like oh oh he has money you know, mm-hmm. he might have a girlfriend, but he got enough money to take care of me, my kid. But at mm-hmm. the same time, once you pop that baby out that thing, let me tell you, your emotions shift. Yes. Um, Come on. Talk to him. Talk you, to him. You start to feel like you should have more access to this other yep. parent. Um, yep. You start getting very demanding mm-hmm. with um, his time. And that's only if you let that man know that you had his kid. A lot of women don't allow men to be a part of the process. And I say this all the time, like if you don't allow a man to be a part of the process of bringing a child in this world, when you have that baby and that man doesn't treat it like it's important, it's because he was never part of the process. There you go. And you can't, you can't, not give a man a, the space to be a part of the process of bringing a child in this world as if he's not important because he is very important. Um, so 
today I'm cutting pieces. I'm hold on. So today is kind of like I uh I think the responsibility of bringing a child into this world is for a man and a woman, but I don't think the women who purposely go against what the man wanted um want to talk about the fact that yeah, he told me he didn't want kids, but I was like, shoot, you're not about to leave me out here and be with no other girl. I'm about to have you on some forever stuff. Yeah. And I'm about to have your kid, which is a selfish reason to have a kid. I never had a kid thinking that's going to keep a man, but a lot of women a do. A lot of women do. A lot of women do. A lot of women do. And that that, that takes me back to um, that episode of uh, Insecure. Um with uh, Lawrence and Condola when he made the remark that uh, you know you kind of blew my life up and if for those who listen you know watch the show mm-hmm. she kind of made that decision to keep yeah. it to be a mom like she that, that was her 100% I'm gonna do this I can handle this I'm independent and shit and I don't need you for nothing right that's how it, that's how at least that's how it came off to me now that the baby's here, she, she had, had a controlling nature. You know, she's very independent. She took care of all the shit. But unfortunately, you didn't make this kid alone. So you can't make all these decisions alone. He wasn't... I'm, and I don't want to say he didn't have the opportunity to be there. But being there is very important. I know for me, um, being there, being able to go to the doctor's appointments, um, seeing... The things that the baby is doing to the mom like so, sometimes the, the baby's kicking the mom's ass sometimes you know what I'm saying the body changes the emotions the appetite and all that other stuff all of that is, is is important for the father to see you want the father to have a connection with you and that kid while that kid is growing inside of you because just like you said when that, when that baby gets here and the father doesn't act like the kid is for lack of better terms important or Mm. or whatever it's, it's kind of hard for that connection to it's what, for me with all the mind that I was, I was there doing both of those pregnancies it's like an automatic it's like it's, it's like you jump right into it it's like you've known that baby since it was the sperm that came out of you mm-hmm. so you just have that you, 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 whatever that is you just have that and it just it started, started from day one the first time you heard the heartbeat the sonogram until you know the baby takes his first breath when he you know when when, when he's finally born mm-hmm. but there are there is a scary thing though because I've, I've heard women say that um they give the man the option like, like either you can be here or you can't and i can handle this or i can take care of this and mm-hmm. of course i think the dad script is to say no 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 i'm gonna be here i got you or boom, 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 boom. There is a, it's like an unknown script, unspoken of script that a man is supposed to follow when certain things are said to him about the child that the woman is carrying. Do you want to be here? Do you not want to be here? No, I'm going to be here. Or uh, when you first find out that um, that she's pregnant, you know, my, I, I learned this from my uncle. Like, you never ask the woman, what does she want? Do you say, what do we want to do? What are we mm. going to do? You always say, like, I learned that shit early early yeah. in the game but it's like you just, it's like the you gotta you, you gotta play the word game I mean you, you should mean the shit that you say but you have to say the right thing because man shit is shit is real now it was real before but it's really real now yeah um, the, 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 the women but the women who prey on it oh, that's their yeah that's my mission. problem the women who mm. source out men to grab their their skeetery Mm -hmm. um there was a woman i forgot what state it was in where she was a maid and it was a millionaire that Mm -hmm. was in the room and she basically took this man's ejaculation from the condom inserted in herself and had his baby and put him on child support that is crazy now if i was that judge i would be like ma'am you were out of order but every state has different laws for different things and different things are set in order and different things are okay Mm -hmm. I just feel like it's not right to one not have a connection with the man that you're even sexually active with 
to mm-hmm. know that this man wants certain things and you still go against his will and then you basically drag this man through the dirt mm. in the public making him seem like oh he's a horrible father look what he did to me when you actually did it to yourself yeah but see but that's the thing though that's like that's like the 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 female privilege if you will mm. like the man could get dragged Un- unbeknownst to him, like that one, he, she she stole it. <laughs> she, yeah. she legitimately stole it and was able to go to a, a court system and ha- have a proceeding, and she win. She be victorious over some bullshit that she did. Yeah. That 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 is a lot. A lot of men are victims of quote unquote the women privilege when it comes to um, the court system and shit like that, which is unfortunate. Like you said, each law, state and county. Yeah. I mean, state county they have their own laws. There's no, there's no shit. nice way for uh, a man to be like. It's not that I didn't want you for a son or a daughter. It's just like I, I didn't have a choice, and you, when you were here, right? I feel like that's a nicer way to put it than I didn't have a choice in having you, right? Because it then it feels like that child is automatically an obligation, but. I do feel like a lot of men don't feel like they have a voice in the matter of are we ready for a kid? And when I said are we ready for a kid, man and woman, are we on the same page in life? Mm -hmm. Can Mm -hmm. we provide for this child? Do you approve of what I think quality parenting is? Do I know what your version of quality parenting is? Okay, Mm -hmm. shall we proceed? None of that is thought about. It's really like, so I'm past these couple of weeks, my belly getting bigger. Mm-hmm. I think outfits is going to be cute. Mm-hmm. I think um, the room is going to be cute. And I'm going to just set up the things that look like it's supposed to work. When really, a man is like struggling where he feels like a puppet in the factor of she she got my kid in her and legally I have to do these things yeah yeah it's wild okay yes. so Juice below we have bubbles okay Juice mm-hmm. is new y'all yeah, so, I'm I'm new, I'm so below there's um, three messages you wanna pop them yeah I'll go, I'll go ahead I'm, 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 I'm reading the one from Substance right now okay oh, okay Substance you done dropped some things okay let's read Let's do um, OG first because she okay. got paired at 927. I'm confused. What are we talking about in this, uh, in this live? What are we talking about? <laughs> she probably, she probably. <laughs> OG, you probably came in on my story of how my children came to be. But we, mm-hmm. we're basically talking about women who go against what a man is saying like I don't want to be a dad men who don't want to be fathers at the time of sex acts happening and the woman goes against the grain and has the baby anyway that's what we're talking about hold on what about the man who knows that the woman doesn't want certain things what about the agreement of look I'm not on birth control. I don't use birth control. Pull out. And one day he decides to not pull out and just says, take the pill. You take the pill. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And then he still puts it on you. (laughs) Like, no. What about the man who knew a woman was on her way to do whatever she wanted to do, career wide, whatever, for whatever reason? She was not, there was no conversation about. Yes, I agree that you can come in me tonight. But the man does it any motherfucking way and then still says he don't want to be a dad. Don't want to hear it. You just heard substance. <laughs> substance, substance, that is a factor. But that's that not the thing. factor tonight that we're talking about. But that does happen. And mm-hmm. it, is a, it is a common thing, unfortunately, for men who are single today to tell a woman... I'm going to get you pregnant as if it's supposed oh, to be some type God. of turn on. That oh, is man. not a turn on. I take no. that as a threat. Yeah, you should. Okay. <laughs> Nigga, so, you should. There's, a, there's a lot of men out here 
who feel like in order to lock down a woman, they need to get her pregnant. Okay? It's kind of like taking them off the market. A lot of women, those are the same horrible mindsets where the women think I'm going to have his baby that way I'm going to always have him forever Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that doesn't work it doesn't work nowhere except with the baby and the homegirl does does a baby mean we now have to live together we now are one we now have to be a family in every photo and post we now have to make this relationship work that worked with our great grandparents Mm-hmm. That don't that don't work, work now. That don't work now. It'll never work today. Okay, and to be honest, our great grandparents they weren't happy with fourteen kids running around their house and seeing their husbands probably twice a month because he worked so mm-hmm. so crazy and he worked so far away that he really wasn't there. So those were really single moms in marriages with hella kids and no support Mm -hmm. okay so fast forward to now where women and men have more options and can be picky about the people that they have sexual relationships with people still aren't picky enough still not I I really I really wish people would become (laughs) more more picky it's crazy okay so since I'm gonna play your other message and you know there's a lot of women who didn't want to be moms you know they didn't want to be moms but out of um the understanding that we have to take responsibility what do we do we'd be like fuck Mm -hmm. i gotta keep this baby because i lied down i laid down with him i had a baby i got pregnant and i took part in that so i'm going to be a mom why aren't men held equally accountable? Like, I don't know why it's no. I think I think men aren't held accountable for that because men don't have to wear the evidence. Dead bingo, bingo. Like men skeet off, and women automatically, physically, uh, emotionally, have to deal with their them skeeting off. Yeah, the change okay. of our skeet. Yes. Okay. Change of our ski. And like, and then a lot of people don't believe this, but it is a scientific fact that if I'm single, I'm not pregnant, another single man, or he could be married or he could be in a relationship, um, we have a sexual intercourse and he ejaculates in me, his 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 kids are going to affect me chemistry wise. Mm-hmm. Okay, so people do transfer themselves into other people, and that does affect your body. Now, how is it affecting your body? Who knows? But that is the thing. A man ejaculating is supposed to create life. It's not just for fun. It's not because it's nine o'clock in the morning and <laughs> I got an hour left to work. Like it, it means something for a man to do that. So. It, it, it does suck that women are usually left with yeah. the responsibility factor in that. And then when it comes to like abortions, which is a completely whole nother shore show, um, E. Ruth and I did a whole show on abortions with women. Um, a lot of women who have had abortions maybe in their younger years or them not knowing better before get to an age in life where they have the relationship they want they have the marriage they want and now they want to have kids and they struggle because sometimes Mm -hmm. abortions leave scarring and that scarring gets in the way of them naturally becoming pregnant to have a healthy pregnancy Mm -hmm. and so people don't talk about that and the thing about that is when it comes to sex and women getting pregnant men aren't left with any scarring or anything physically that will stop them from having a baby later but women are a lot of women have bad side effects with birth control I've never physically taken birth control in my life but a lot of women have to have surgeries when it comes to the IUD a -hmm. lot of women have bad side effects when it comes to those pills and if you think about it 
all birth control is when it comes to that pill form and different chemicals being put in your body um, every month is a pill that's telling your body not to do something it's naturally supposed to do. Yeah. So if you think about it, why would I, as a single woman that's not in a committed relationship, get on birth control to make sure the man that I'm having sexual relations with sometimes has the relaxation of ah she's not gonna get pregnant she's on birth control but <laughs> you're but you're not doing anything physically to your body or mentally to your body to stop you from ejaculating and having kids being somebody mm-hmm. it's very sexist when it comes to um birth control and men there is birth control for men that came out two years ago but do you see any uh commercials for it hell no do you see any posters for it? Hell no. Do you see any ads and podcasts for male birth control? Hell because, no. Because it's still a sexist thing when it comes to babies and people that women, it's their responsibility, not a man's. Mm-hmm. And that's unfortunate. Yeah, that, no, that's fucked up. That's crazy. That's fucked up, for real. That really is fucked up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this message from e Ruth. And I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna ask you two questions that I have on my list of things. Okay. All right. You know this particular topic, by the way. Hey, hey, Shan. What's that? It's the homie. Um, <laughs> hi, Juice. I Hola. feel like I don't even know if I'm leaving a message. Oh, I am. Okay, it's all different now. I don't know how I feel about this new. <laughs> I don't know. I'll get used to it. But anyway, on the topic at hand, he said he didn't want to be a dad. This particular topic really, really shined the light on the whole the baby situation. Yeah. And uh, several of the friends that I have, I have a couple of male friends who will roast their baby mothers because they feel like their baby mothers were immature or just weren't fit to be a mother. And it's just like it cuts both ways. You know, like people are going to criticize. But like these are adult people who are supposed to be making supposed to be making adult decisions. And shit goes south, but you ain't got to do it like that. Like, have the conversation first so that you know what you're getting yourself into. Agreed. That's a fact. fact. Because I feel like I feel like a lot of men pick the hoodies of the hood. Okay, and I'm not talking Red Riding Hood. I feel like they they pick the nastiest attitude of women to have sexual relations with to go to clubs with and then when you skeet her up and she ends up pregnant you just like dog I can't let her have my baby you shouldn't have been with her in yeah. the first place dog oh, dead ass dead ass like what are we talking dead, about here dead ass listen there was, there was a time in my life where I was so attracted to the hood rat the uh the woman with the with the fiery red hair and all that shit oh my god now, do the, now listen now listen do the blessings of God do the blessings <laughs> God, <laughs> I did not, I did not, you know, take it there with any of them. But no, yeah. I know, I know, I, I, I know men who, who, I mean, like, like you said, roast their baby mama, and like mm-hmm. just talk ill and talk bad, and and look, man, look, I get it. You have a kid with another adult, you know, you have two different views shit happens emotions are evolved and you know mm-hmm. words get exchanged and you know you just dislike them and all that shit trust me being a baby father it ain't it, it ain't all sweet right it ain't all sweet so but i just i just feel like for a man and, and even for a woman because i i know women who, who roast their baby daddies too <sighs> and, and, and i know this is hard to do for some but sometimes you just gotta shut the fuck up yes Sometimes you just gotta shut the fuck up. As mad as uh, their moms may make me, mm-hmm. man, and how I express that about them or to them or whatever, I, I don't want, I don't want to ever bash their, 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 their mom. Right. Because your your mom, your mom is wonderful. Your mom is great. We have had, <clears throat> we have just had situations where we don't like each other. Mm-hmm. It's situational. It's, it's 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 not it's not long term. It's not permanent. So I don't want to bash anybody and no shit like that. And I, I, I for, speaking for men, shut up. Yeah, women Just be too. Quiet, man, don't do it. This is for me. My technique is like stay less. Okay, yeah. because whoever your your child's parent is, 
they're mm-hmm. going to show themselves to their children. Yeah. And so like now, um, let's say if I'm doing everything that I can do and I don't feel like there's balance in the parenting with their dads, what is me complaining and yelling going to do? Not a fucking thing. What what is what is the long text messages and the blowing up the phone and the pulling up and going to do? What type Anything. of example is that setting for my daughters as far as like if a man doesn't do this, then this is what you do. And right. I'm I'm gonna be an angry woman still going through parenting alone with my kids when I can be like, okay. I told you that she needed X, Y, and Z on the 5th of October. It is now mm-hmm. November 19th and <laughs> I still have to buy whatever she needed by myself. Right. My, my thing is like as a parent you make it happen whether or not you have help. And sometimes as a parent, dads and moms you're going to have to make things happen without appreciation from the other mm-hmm. parent. You're mm-hmm. going to have to make things happen without um, the other parent acknowledging the fact that you always come through. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to make things happen when it is the most unfair situation. Mm-hmm. Okay? And the best thing that you can do is to not waste the energy so I had to learn to not waste my energy my relationships with their dads hasn't always been this peaceful or chill Mm -hmm. because I had to I had to get over um, being right because most of the times I was right but at the same time being right and a man being in his ego y'all not gonna get to any type of result that y'all want So I've learned to not say anything. I've learned to not show any emotion. And I've learned to quietly get it done. And most of the time what ends up happening is the parent that's slacking is so embarrassed to show up Mm -hmm. to to the result that they just don't show up. Yeah. Girl, you know what I mean? You know how many times I'd have been right about some shit. (laughs) Knew I was right. You everybody else around me whoever knew about the situation knew I was right but because she didn't feel like I was right I lost or I was wrong and you know how many yeah. times I don't had to, I don't had to bite that bullet like man look it is but you just gotta pick and choose your battles every yeah. <clears throat> every battle is not the war yeah every battle is not the war you just gotta decide what's what's more important now listen because going back and forth with a person who don't listen is insane Mm-hmm. You can be as right as you want to. Ain't nobody listening to you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they're not listening to you. You just got. You, you just have to continue to be dad, a father. Whatever, whatever it is that you've been doing, get over this little, this, this little tit, this little spat that y'all going through, and just be there. Unfortunately, for the for the mature or the understanding parent, you just gotta you gotta let shit ride. You know what's really hard with that when your kids get older is let's say you're the parent that picks up the slack of the other parent Mm -hmm. most of the time when that child gets upset or that one thing that you can't do for the child they be like oh yeah oh yeah oh my daddy and i be like Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i be like this man costume is where is waldo's stripe hat <laughs> all the time like what are you talking about right now mm-hmm. what are you talking about I'm Trust in me, here I'm in here washing clothes you just put on today I'm in here mm-hmm. picking up toys I had to buy that you leave all over the floor I'm in here paying utilities mm-hmm. while you leave my door open and my heat is going outside warming up all of the birds like what are you talking about <laughs> Like, I'd be so upset, but it's just like, why spend that energy yelling? I'd rather just turn up my music and tune my kids out. Yeah. No, trust, listen, man, trust me. Being a, being a father who has his kids 85% of the time, mm-hmm. I know that feeling. Close my door. Why are these lights on? You're not here. 
oh, I couldn't do this today. You want mommy? Fine. Go get Wait it. a minute. Let's pause on this. Let's talk about the fathers that have their kids 85% of the time and still pay child support to a parent mm. that's the last. Mm. Oh, God. Nobody has that conversation. You know how many men pay child support to a mom when the child primarily lives with the man? That is, man, that is, that, that is a sh- Oof, Lord. Mm-mm. I mean, nah. I'm, I'm not saying that happens all the time, for, but, no, but for, it those, does. for those men that it does happen to, they have nobody on their side to be like, oh, this is incorrect. Yeah. You know, and I feel like women more so put going to court for maybe upping the child support or... Mm-hmm. Um, getting more or whatever little problem they have, mm. they will take off of work to go to court. Oh, they yeah. will they will uh, bring the baby to court mm-hmm. to to get whatever they want to get done. But mm-hmm. when you think of a man who is already on child support, it is hard for a man who is already on child support getting less of his check to be at a job, especially with manual labor, and be like, "Hey, is it okay if I come in?" at 2 p.m. on Tuesday because I have court that morning for the sixth time this month. (laughs) Sir, you're not going to have a job. And then with a man not having a job that has to pay child support, sir, you're going to be locked up. Your license is going to be suspended. And then it Mm -hmm. it just snowballs into this system of the ending result when a man gets caught up in child support who is actually Mm -hmm. trying, because let me add that in there, a man who is actually trying and not purposely working under the table jobs is Mm -hmm. your child will always end up with less. Yeah. Your child will always end up with less if the fight is, I want more money than I need already. Mm -hmm. Okay, because Mm -hmm. the goal is not what these women out here who target men who they feel like have a lifestyle they want. The goal is not for this man to pay for my lifestyle because I have his kid, i.e. one of future baby moms that wanted 53K a month for child support for one kid. That girl was crazy. But like that is not the goal. The goal is, can I get me a parent that meets me halfway with time uh, dedication, mm-hmm. financial support, emotional support, and actually has a relationship with my kid. Right. I think there are a lot of women, not all, a lot of women who think a baby's going to keep them, want access to that man all the time. They want mm-hmm. equal importance to his girlfriend or you know, his wife, or she's only his girlfriend with the baby because he spends more time with her because she has a baby. Well, I'm going to have a baby too. That's not going to help it because a man can only be at one place at one time. Yeah. Okay? Because there there are a lot of kids who, yes, they have a dad that does what he can, but he's not with the mother. And that dad also has kids elsewhere. And there's always going to be children or a child that feels like they don't get enough time with that father. Or he's slipping in this area. And the thing is, to pop any parent's bubble, whether you're a man or a woman, is you will never, ever, in your child's eyes, spend enough time or do everything right. There is going to be something that you're slipping on with them. There's going to be something that you kind of uh, did better. So I think when men have kids outside the household and women think it's cute that yeah he got five kids but I want to be the six uh, you're uh, robbing you're robbing your child of yeah. a fatherhood bond and time that he can have with a man or her um, by spreading him out so thin yeah 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 it's crazy. So, okay. So, where are we? So, my um, my third question to you is, what did you learn um, about responsibility when it came to your dick with your first kid? 
<laughs> I had to put it that way. I had to. <laughs> oh, yo. Okay. All right. Right. Yeah. I learned. I learned mad responsibility about my dick. Right. Okay. For a long time, <laughs> at the at the my daughter was born, um, I didn't do shit. I didn't touch nothing. I didn't want to touch were nothing. Were you scared? You were scared? I was scared out of my fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to touch a thing. I right, now nah, fuck it. I'm straight. I, I'm good. I don't want yeah. nothing. Like, that was that. That's why. Well, not, not, that's not the main reason why. But that's part and why um, there's such a huge gap in between my babies because I'm not doing shit. Let me tell you, that happens for women too. I was terrified. After I had my kid, I didn't want to have sex for like a year and a half. Fact. I didn't. I didn't want to be touched. Right. Like I'm good. I'm. I'm straight. Hey, you ain't got nothing I ain't seen before. Listen. I done seen it, and and, and right now I done seen it all. So you can't show me <laughs> shit. <laughs> you can't show me shit. Yeah. Nothing. This is wild. It's um. It's one of those things where you just like, I thought, I thought, you know, the pull-out method was a thousand oh, percent. Pull I and thought, pray. listen, mm-hmm. I thought uh, we had this under control. And then, you know, your first kid is when you realize that God doesn't care about your plans. <laughs> mm, not at all. Not at all. God doesn't care about your plans. Um, not at all. And I say this like this because even the parents who went to college, got the job, have the house, have the income, have the savings, have the life insurance, even when those parents plan to have a kid, those parents have the hardest time conceiving (laughs) because being a great parent is not 100% about being able to have all of the right things or have the money is really like God's timing Mm -hmm. Um, some people have have sex the first time and have twins you know what I'm saying Yeah. and and you just hope that the gamble that's not your gamble you know Um, I, I was very terrified that I was going to have twins before I had kids because my dad was a twin. Oh, shit. Um, but the twins uh, run on, I think twins run on like the woman's side. Mm-hmm. So because my mom didn't have any, um, I, I guess I was safe. But I, right. I was, that was always a fear of mine. Um, I don't know. When it comes to women's responsibility... I will say um, with kids, if you think you want to have a kid with a man because he has a lifestyle you like or you really like him or you like him more than he likes you, but you want to lock him down, Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a dumb thing to do because what what a woman puts her body through to to carry a child, let alone birth a child, it's it's crazy. It's like, it's like having possible great sex and now you signed up yourself for 10 months of prison time and the, <laughs> and the prison the prison is your body and you mm-hmm. have no say so on what symptoms you're gonna have every month you have no say so on what your favorite food is gonna taste like mm-hmm. um you might go through three months of feeling like every time you eat you want to throw up um Till this day, I can't walk in subways. I can't smell subway. I get yeah. nauseous. Um, things that smell like mango make me nauseous till this day. It's just, it's, it's weird. Like pregnancy really uh, takes away from your body. And I think people glorify it too much. That's why women are very eager for mm-hmm. the wrong reasons to have children with men who mm-hmm. they really don't like. They just kind of like what that man can do for them. Or mm-hmm. they like what comes with being able to say, oh, that's my child's father. Yeah. Or, and, you, know, and you know what? I hate I hate the, the, the phrase or the term baby daddy. Me too. 
I hate, I can't stand it. And my son's mother from time to time, and she know I can't stand it. So she'll jokingly, you know, say, hey, baby, I hate it. I don't, I hate it. I, I, it bothers me so bad. I don't, I don't allow their dads to call me that. So like um, the other day, uh, one of the dads was like, so he was like, so what do you need help with as far as like your podcast go? Because he's an engineer. And I was like, mm. I said, I don't know. I said probably like transitions the most mm-hmm. and he was like well like I, he was like I know we not together and I know I'm not a part of your podcast but I don't have no problem helping you because you're my you're my baby right. mother and I was like excuse mm-hmm. me and he was like, I'm, he was like I'm, not, he said, I'm not saying that you're my baby mom I'm saying like you're the mother of my kid so he knows like I hate that term so much because I feel like when you say baby mother, baby father, it breeds negativity. It, it, it does. It breeds like you are a step below a father or a mother. Um, yeah. You happen. You just so happen to be my kid's mother or my kid's dad. You're not really important. So I don't say that like to my kids. Like that's your dad. That's her dad. You know, I'm your mom. And if they right. talk, if they talk to me or they talk they bring me up I said I would like for you to use my first name and and if you can't use my first name just say um Arya or Anya's mom but don't ever in your life fix your lips yeah to, I don't like to, that shit to use that to um say who I am um so I'm in agreement with that okay so my next question for you is Okay, so don't beat Juice up for his answer, y'all. Oh, shit. Um, because this is his opinion. Who do you feel like is the baby or um, or the possibility of no baby responsible, responsibility the most? So basically, is it more of the woman's responsibility when there is a baby or no baby or is it more so the man's responsibility when there's a baby or no baby meaning if you have sexual activity and the possibility of a baby comes up is there anybody that's more of the blame in your opinion <sighs> more of the blame okay all right the blame of the baby coming to be so Back. it's kind of like it's like is it because he didn't wear a condom so it's his fault or is it because you didn't care if he wore a condom or not on the woman's side or is it because you didn't take your birth control that's why you ended up pregnant because the condom box tells you <laughs> that it's not 100% <laughs> um, I have a lo- I have at least three 99% baby, uh, birth control cousins okay so the birth control is not even 100% so mm-hmm. when it comes to blame factor in your opinion who do you think uh, carries more of the responsibility a man or a woman who 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 should okay who does carry it i think the man carries it which i which i believe is unfair because all everything is situational as far as that goes because i don't know if you took your birth control as well so yeah the things that we've been doing while I'm assuming you're on birth control, I've, I've been shooting your club up for the past however many months and you've been on birth control and nothing's been happening. You got mm-hmm. tired of taking it or you forgot to take it and boom, here we are. Or um, we both agreed to uh, have unprotected sex and pull and pray, but tonight some pull little pre-ejaculation pray. came out. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you can't blame anyone on that. I think the only way you can blame someone is something is done intentional. Something is done intentionally. I think I think the blame should be should be shared equally. Okay, have you unless ever... there's ill intent or something behind it? Okay, so have you ever been in the middle of a session and the condom broke? Yes. What yes, was I the have. was there a scare or no? There was a. This feels wetter than it should. Did y'all stop? Let me. I did. Okay. I stopped and looked. I said, oh, there's no more condom here. And let me tell you was... something. So in 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 high school, um, mm-hmm. later in high school, like closer to like graduation, because I'm not a heathen. Mm-hmm. Um, a 
and in my in my early 20s my vagina loved to eat condoms for snacks okay <laughs> they, like, I, I, I kid you not like I will go to I will go to class I will use the bathroom and be like I will text them like hey I found the condom from like two days ago yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, and you you, get, you you talk about somebody in deep prayer in that bathroom, like mm-hmm. I hope he doesn't have Olympians. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because that's a very scary thing. And then, in 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 my last relationship that I had in college, we were using protection, and it did break. Mm-hmm. And while I took a shower that man had to drive himself to the grocery store to go buy a plan B and stayed at the apartment all day so I could take both pills. At that time it was two pills. It wasn't one. Yeah, it wasn't one. But it still was $50 for those two little pills. But I feel like the cost of a child over a lifetime versus $50 sir, we about to go get this plan B. Oh yeah, 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 you win. Right, because in college I was like, I'm not even graduated yet. Graduation is in June. The the graduation gown is purple. You're not about to have me looking like Barney on stage. <laughs> this is not about to happen. So I was like, that's an absolute no. So um I think the responsibility is also on men more. Mm-hmm. Not because I just want to pick on men, but because a woman can't have a baby period without that man skeetery. That's very true. Okay. She can want to have a baby as much as she wants. Um, there's lots of pleasure toys out here that she can mm. pleasure herself with instead of calling you up. But once she calls you up, I think the responsibility of if there's going to be a life or not, or not relies in your, your, your main piece. It does. I'll give you that. It does. It does. Because no baby will come unless I add my special sauce. Special sauce. And we're not talking about ranch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got so we got um we got a lot of messages. I'm gonna run through them. All right. Don't forget to get your merch for this fall winter on the Cozy Womb Shop. And you can also shop Mama's Cozy Closet, which is where you get all the mom gear for moms. All right? Don't forget, it's out there. I'm talking sweatshirts, hoodies, mugs, cups, uh, t-shirts, even onesies for the babies at Cozy Womb Shop and Mama's Cozy Closet. Now back to the show. And at the same time, You know, it's I love that you talked about the fact that, you know, the decision that you made was based off of purpose, right? Like your mom, it was important for you for your mom to be able to have a a relationship with a child of yours and that you considered the fact that your mom was aging and, you know, these decisions need to be made. And then, of course, the selections of, of men that you chose to be their father. And, you know, yes, things don't go right all the time, but for the most part. The fact that you have, so it sounds like you have some foundation for yourself, some stability for yourself, that you've done the work yourself to prepare right. yourself to be able to be a mother. And that is a hard thing for some men to do. But there's also some men who just, who, who, who stand up and take care of what they got to take care of and are better fathers than some of these moms. Yes. Yeah. That part. Oh, yeah. There's, oh, a yeah. lot of, there's a lot of great single dads. I just feel like it's not in a man's nature to be super boastful about, I take care of my kids by myself. Yeah, their no, mom ain't never that. been here. Their mom ain't never been a mother because there are, you know, biological mothers who aren't mothers. They're not yeah. motherly. They're not nurturing. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't hug kids. They don't know how to be affectionate. Uh they feel no connection with children. They just feel mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, and I got those two kids over there, so I need more money, you know? Right. And um, it shouldn't be like that, but that is a thing. All right, Substance, we got a message from you. Girl, it happens to me. This is the story of my life. 
Every time I meet a man, he wants to get me pregnant. Like, why? I have one child because, girl, I was fighting tooth and nail. I didn't have a baby till I was 28. I was holding out, out. I only have one kid. I'm 33 now. But, yes, girl, I'm talking to somebody else, and guess what? Oh, I have my baby. Oh, God, no. Jesus Christ. No, I had a man a man and i won't say what his profession was because then there's gonna be a whole drama thing i had a man that i knew okay who who exceptional on paper multiple jobs no Mm. kids um his own business and i was in the middle of finding a house and moving and he was like you know what he was like if you need to move you could just stay with me at my house with the girls i don't mind I was like, absolutely not. Yeah. Because because uh-uh. I knew through past conversation that he had he had hopes of possibility of me being the mother of his kid. Uh-huh. And my thing is I knew at that time like we weren't in a relationship. I don't know you like that to be like, ah, that's the possibility. But I as a woman, and I feel like women do this also. You know when a man likes you more than you like him. Oh, and yeah. you know when you're putting yourself in a position where they will see you and think, oh, you're here because you also like me equally. Or mm-hmm. you're with me because you also want what I want equally. And a lot of women do that to get things, to gain um, whether it's popularity exposure money materialistic Mm. things um access and then when that man is like why would you be here why would you be with me if you didn't want to give me sex or why why would you be with me when you know i want kids and you already got kids so what's the problem why wouldn't you want my kids and you put yourself in a situation where a man feels like you need to let me have sex with you My thing is like, even if I was homeless and I had my two kids and I was in the middle of finding somewhere to be, I'm not moving in with that man because I know he's too eager for me to be the mother of his possible child. Right. And so I I think it's very, it's a responsibility factor for women to not put themselves in relationships or situations or places where a man can possibly take it the wrong way and take advantage of them. Right. And when he said verbatim to me after, he was like, I, he was like, I think you're cool. I like you. Um, and I think like you would be a great mom to my kids. Like there are men that say this with no relationship, with no chemistry no nothing just in conversation i'm just like dog that is not that is not how this works i was like i was like i don't want any more kids and he was like why not you're a great mom your kids are beautiful what's the easiest choice you can make window instead of middle seat picking a vendor who sends a great gift basket outsourcing business tasks you hate what about selling with shopify Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash try. Go to shopify.com slash try now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash try. You're a beautiful woman. That is not a reason to yeah. have more kids. <laughs> I need more than that. Listen, and I think a lot of people who don't have kids don't understand that until they have one and be like, dog. Yeah. I thought, and it'd be like, nah, dog. You be like, nah, that because, ain't it. <laughs> because before, before I had to push one of these big head kids out of my hoo-ha, 
I was like, man, I want me 13 boys. I'm going to have me my own football team of boys. We're going to be coming in thick. Okay. <laughs> get, get me the expedition, all black rims. We coming in thick. We need an extra row in the back. Mm-hmm. Then when I popped that big head child out of me, hence the name of the podcast, Cozy Womb, because both of my kids were late. Both mm-hmm. of them had to be induced. And even when I was pushing, this girl was moving up to my esophagus. Like, Jesus Christ. I will never <laughs> purposely have more children, okay? Not because I don't think I'm capable, not because I'm not healthy. I just know mentally, emotionally, and physically, I will check out. Yeah. Allowing my body to go through all of those changes for a complete stranger mm-hmm. that I feel like I want to have the capacity to love on three kids the way I need to. And I think a lot of women who are out here who purposely pick men because of money, because of status, because they want their lifestyle to be a particular way, you don't think about the fact that, yeah, you got all these kids and their dad have X and Y, Z money, but what is the quality of their life? Right. What is what what is your relationship with this child in in value? Do you actually love spending time with this child? Because let me tell you something. You may give birth to kids and somebody may have given birth to your kids' juice, but it is a relationship that you have with a completely different human being when you have kids and you have mm-hmm. to learn them. It's give and take. And mm-hmm. Some people give birth to their enemy. <laughs> some some people give birth to a child whose whole goal in life is to become a nuisance and drag you through the mud. Mm-hmm. Whether it's they always getting kicked out of school or they breaking into somebody's house or, you know, you got to do a whole bunch of bailing them out of shit. A lot yep. of, a, a lot of children go against the grain their whole life and you sit there and be like what 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 did I do wrong and sometimes parents don't do anything wrong it's just your child's personality is this and so for me I think like it is my responsibility to check in with myself and be like can I mentally handle more kids would I be doing a third child of the service by having the third child for whatever reason I thought I wanted to and then right. knowing I don't want to care about your feelings. I don't want to care about changing your diaper. I don't want to care about taking you to school. I don't want to care about rearranging my schedule to pick you up because I did that twice already. Right. And I, I feel like a lot of moms because they're miserable or a lot of bitter baby moms that word that we don't like Mm-hmm. I feel like they are like that because they knew they were already strained. They knew yeah. mentally, financially, and emotionally they could not handle more kids. But they had it thinking that that child was going to lock down a man or that child was going to give them some sense of financial gain. So they had mm-hmm. that baby with that man. And that man is like, okay, you going to put me on, on like government contract where I got to pay you money? fine then I'll work under the table yeah you know or I'll I'll scam there's a lot of scammers in Atlanta there's a lot of scammers in New York there's a lot of scammers <laughs> in, in Philly like there there are men who purposely will not get a job because the point of them getting that job and working their hours that they work they will never be able to afford their lifestyle and take care of the children on government paper for the cost that they want right and i I feel i feel like no man should ever have to feel like i have to hide from the public because i have a child and i can't afford the child according to this court so now my lifestyle has to be below a certain level and so when i talk about this i'm talking to the women who spitefully have these children because for whatever reason they feel animosity towards a man and and you don't you don't progress that child doesn't progress 
and y'all just right. too miserable. Y'all just too miserable people making somebody else miserable, or you think you're making somebody else's somebody else's life miserable, and you're not. Right. Sure ain't. You're making yours miserable. Right. I'm just like, dog. Make it make sense. It it never make sense. It's crazy. Ever. So okay. So in your opinion, Juice, as a father, if a man says he doesn't want kids, what should he or she do at that point? Now, is is if, if the man said he doesn't want to have kids, does he say this, or is she just learning this when she is pregnant, or this is no, this is this, this is pre-pregnancy. If he says to a woman, "I don't want kids." And maybe they're in a relationship, maybe they're not. Maybe they're just sexual active with each other. What should he or she do? Um, I, he should find out if she want to have kids or not. If if he don't want to have any, he's told her that he's been vocal about that, and she says she does. Bro, you might want to not. You you might want to stop fucking her. Exactly. You might want to stop fucking her because. If, if we've been <laughs> we've been 100% real um the condom ain't gonna stay on but for so long um and when it does stay on it's not 100% at that point you gotta stop fucking him or she gotta stop fucking him somebody gotta stop fucking yeah because you I think that keep, you can't keep fucking I think that's a sign that oh you headed in the wrong direction yeah you know some uh, somebody over here is not on your ways. Um, a lot of men might have a what do you call it? A sneaky link. Mm-hmm. A sneaky link. And sometimes that sneaky link will sneak that ass all the way up in your life. Mm-hmm. And how they sneak themselves into your life is they tell you, "Oh, I'm on birth control. Don't worry about it." And they mm-hmm. they maybe they've been taking that birth control and they decide that they want to be more with you. And you don't necessarily want to be more with that person. You want to keep things as is. And right. all all that woman has to do is wait till you get comfortable. Yep. Stop taking her birth control. And yep. boom, y'all got a pregnancy. And even though you don't want to be more than what y'all been, she's having that baby. And a lot Please. of men, a lot of men end up with another baby because their sneaky link made a decision. Yeah. Yep, but the moment you know, the moment you know as a man that you don't want to have any, and listen, I get it. Vagina is amazing. Trust me, it is. But you gotta chill. <laughs> you you gotta have more. You gotta have more control over your dick than that. Yeah. You gotta have more control over your dick than that. You can't. Don't keep fucking a girl who says you want to have kids, but you don't want to have kids, nigga. You're gonna be a father. <laughs> you gotta think about it like that. You're gonna be a father, dog. You got stop it, man. You gotta. You, you have to think about it like that. That may be worst case scenario for that gentleman who don't want to have any kids. But my nigga, you said to be a dad. I think it's very important for men who may not have kids, who are single or in relationships, to have friends who have kids, because mm-hmm. this conversation needs to be had with men who feel like they are not ready to be fathers so if they are you know dumb enough to not see the signs that this is where you're heading they have someone like you to be like dog this is where you're heading this is what's going to happen absolutely absolutely oh my god that's crazy um okay my next question is why don't more men get vasectomies if they don't want kids if they stupid they should do it <laughs> do it <laughs> that's why because they dumb go do it I don't know maybe and you know what I I also have never asked anyone this question that's a very good question but I would like to because assume, isn't, isn't vasectomies reversible yes they are but see a lot, I feel like and this is just my opinion and I could be wrong I feel like a lot of men compare it to like like a dog being neutered so they feel like they're not going to be you know the same man that they once it's were not. or whatever I don't give a fuck if I'm yeah. not the same man take it <laughs> take Listen, it that's what take I the told the whole sack 
That's what I told them when uh, I went in there for them to take my fallopian tubes. Oh, I said, oh, the bridge is over. Take all of this out. <laughs> remove it all. I don't want... When, I said, I turned to my doctor. I said, sir, when that man skied to me, I want to be a slip and slide, honey. I want them, oh I want them kids God. to go in there thinking that they going for gold and I want them to dive off into a cliff. <laughs> I said, take it all out. So I... After me knowing for sure, like, okay, for women after 35, I'm 34. For women after 35, mm. you can you can get pregnant and you can have a pregnancy, but your odds of it being dangerous go the fuck up. Yeah. For black women in the United States, when it comes to pregnancy and healthcare, your odds of you having a healthy delivery and pregnancy go the fuck up and right. my thing is like because I'm single and I'm not in a relationship and I would never date or be in a relationship with a man right now and have a baby a year later <clears throat> I, I'm not about to put myself through that because I have two kids that are here that need me so right. I was like okay I'm not having any more kids so I went and I got the procedure done and let me tell you about corporate America corporate America and women will pay for your full procedure to, to have permanent birth control. Uh. So I didn't pay nothing out of pocket to have the surgery done. Shit, that's what it is. Shit. So I went and I got the surgery done. It was like uh, two hours or an hour. I got the best drugs in the world. Uh -huh. Okay. And I tested it out. And the doctor knew what he was doing because it is a slip and slide, okay? There was, <laughs> there was, there was no kids. I had my cycle. It came like normal. I said, okay, you, you do good work. You know what I'm saying? We good. Oh, shit. That's me being responsible. Yeah, it is. Especially, I mean, if you know what you want or you know what you don't want, you do that. You do what you need to make sure that that happens, that that, you know, remains a thing. But I think a lot of women don't do that. For whatever for whatever reason they don't do it. I think men don't do it because they just think, you know, this is not gonna happen to me or that won't happen to me, and they don't do it. And I feel like you do yourself a disservice if you know that you don't want more kids or you don't want kids at all, and you <clears throat> deal with somebody that you know does and you fake like you wanna create a future with this person and you don't. Yes, please stop faking it. Please. Please so stop to, faking it. To me, that's wild. Okay, so we got like nine messages. Nice. I'ma play them. Let's see. Oh, we got a I, we got a man dropping a message. Excuse me. <laughs> I mean, that is true, and it's an unfortunate fact that um within the court system, as far as um children are concerned and who is going to have custody of the child and who's going to pay uh, for the child. Um, more often than not, the court favors women uh, than men in that regard. Um, I just think that there's this whole uh, patriarchal system that still exists within the court whereby it's often assumed that the man is going to be the breadwinner and the woman is going to be the nurturer therefore the man should pay uh child support to the woman oh yeah and the woman should have custody of that child even though she might be proven to be unfit that's crazy to me but it does happen oh yeah oh yeah oh, that's that's an everyday thing Wild. that's an everyday thing it's scary as shit too you would have to be like a horrible mom, like in the streets, uh, doing dope in front of your kids, leaving your child in a car for hours before a court be like, you know what? Let's give this man more than we can. And it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And shit, and, and even even then, she still may win. That's true. True. She still may win. It's fucking because insane. Because courts feel like, you know, it's a horrible thing to take a child from its mother, but it's but fathers are equally needed. 
Yes, yes, they are. And I wish I wish more people understood that. Like, yes, we are. The same way a mom is needed. Same way that we 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 both need it. There's a reason why you need both of us to, to create a child. Facts. All right, I'm gonna play Nari's message. Hello, hello, blessings, blessings. Okay, so my opinion on it if a dude tells you that he doesn't want to be a dad or he's not interested at this time or whatever it is i feel like you should respect that now if you go ahead and decide to have this baby or if you're already pregnant you decide to have the baby then it's up to you to raise that you shouldn't you shouldn't expect anything out that guy when it comes to this baby because he made it clear that he does not want it didn't want to be a father whatever so don't expect nothing raise your baby on your own now you know there is some crazy little females out here that thinks otherwise well it's my body my choice so you're gonna take care of this baby regardless and i think like i feel like that's just the dumbest thing ever it's real dumb (laughs) like respect his his opinion (laughs) respect his values like if he doesn't want it then Take another route. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is dumb. That is dumb. It is dumb. It's fucking stupid. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Uh, you know for a fact that he don't want it, but you won't go ahead with it anyway. Again, it is your body. It is your choice. But to have the expectation that he's going to do something simply because you made a, a, a selfish or whatever decision you made it's fucked up it's dumb like you said it's dumb okay so let's segue into this real quick before i play another message so i sent you a clip today of a man who already had five kids previously mm-hmm. and his girlfriend um surprised him with a pregnancy positive test mm. And he said he got upset and he told her that he doesn't want another kid. And she still wanted to go through with it. Her mom knew, her sister knew, and she had the ultrasound picture and baby clothes in the apartment. This man kidnapped her and she texts her her sister from the trunk and she was like, she was like, hey, I've been kidnapped. I'm in such and such trunk of his truck. And um, what happened was the police went out looking for her. And when they went out looking for her, they found her body on the side of the road with gunshots. And her mom was on the news talking about how he just shot her and left her on the side of the road like a dog. And I'm, I'm not saying that that's the answer to you know you don't want kids and somebody's gonna have the kid anyway but my thing is like if a man expresses to you that he does not want kids and he's not all the way right a lot of these males today are not all the way uh how can i how can i put this they're not sane they don't do things in a responsible manner they don't think about the repercussions for their actions. They uh-huh. act out. They act out whether it's nighttime, whether it's broad daylight, whether there's people around, and they react. And this man thought, even though he had five kids that needed him, that he probably felt like he was completely spent for. He couldn't fathom having a six. And instead of that being a what are we going to do discussion, she might have took it as okay you don't want kids but I want a kid so I'm gonna go ahead and have it no matter what you said and he lost it and he killed her and now not only is that baby going to be a, 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 a part of his murder charge she's gonna be a part of his murder charge and then those five kids that need that man are out of a debt yep to me, it's just not worth it to go against somebody's wishes as far as bringing a life into this world. And then... It's, just, it's, it's sad all the way around. It is very sad, but it's one thing to be like, well, I want the baby, and you disappear. You know what I'm saying? You, you're not yeah. in this person's face. You're not around this person. This person doesn't know where you're at. 
you just over here living your life and they have no ties to you but it's another mm-hmm. thing to be like I don't want this I, I want this baby I know you don't want this baby we still in a relationship we still gonna live together and we gonna hang out that's spiteful mm-hmm. yeah it's tough it's so tough. unfortunately unfortunately this, this lady lost her life and there are yeah. a lot of men out here murdering women because they didn't get an abortion or they don't want more kids and they feel like their life is now in the woman's hands yeah. and she's basically going to do whatever she wants to do with how their life is going to play out and they don't know how to handle it so mm-hmm. I just I don't feel like with today's males because I can't call them all men with today's males that's a smart move for women to be like well, if you don't want the baby, don't worry. I'm going to take care of the baby on my own and turn around and be like, I'm putting you on child support. Yeah. No, ma'am. That's not I how this works. I hate that shit. So I just feel like there needs to be, for men who don't want kids, there needs to be steps in place to make it known that if sex happens and it goes this way and you end up pregnant, I already signed this form, dated it, had it uh what what do they call notarized and you signed this form that says I don't want any kids so therefore you cannot put this responsibility on me. Mm-hmm. I feel like that I feel like sex at this point when it comes to men and women of today it needs to be taken that serious mm-hmm. to to safeguard men who don't want kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And my thing is, if you don't think it's that serious or it's that important to to sign off on before y'all fuck, then I feel like you need to go ahead and gamble with what your your possibilities are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I think you need to accept that it ain't gonna be shit. I think that's what you need to do. I think, yeah. Uh, mm. God, I just wish niggas would. I wish everybody would just choose differently. <laughs> I, wish everybody, I wish everybody would just choose differently and, and people just fucking listen. I, I really did. I, I really wish they would. Do you think it has a lot to do with um, single moms and baby mamas being glorified? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. <clears throat> Pardon me. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just got too excited. Hell yes. <laughs> hell yes. yes. It is fucking. It's, it is glor. It's glorified madness, and because your favorite uh, Instagram person with the blue check, because yeah. they are make that seem really, really great, and it's, it's this, and I'm a boss ass bitch or whatever the saying is today. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what it's no more. That just makes the, the the person who's looking at them or envious of how they're living and this lifestyle that they're portraying, because it's all a portrayal. It's bullshit. Mm-hmm. You don't know what what they're really going through, but the part that they show you is glorious. It's glamorous. They love that. You know shit. who I blame? I blame MTV too. Team Mom. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because that was a that was a running series, and you couldn't tell these young hoochies that season after season mm-hmm. after season. So mm-hmm. okay, true story. When I went to high school in Florida. The school needed updating. It needed more rooms for classrooms. Uh-huh. Instead of them do more rooms for classrooms, these people had six trailers of daycare for the teen moms who went to the high school who had kids. Damn. So for me, I feel like, okay, yes, you want these moms to finish high school, so you provide them with daycare or the ability to have an elective where it's child care on, on the high school grounds. But at the same sense, you are now mentally telling these girls that, hey, don't worry. If you have sex unprotected and you get pregnant, you can still finish school and just take them over here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's, 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 it's glorified. It's so sad. It's sickening. That is glorified, man. It's, uh, it, uh, it's, it's, it's trash. It's trash. Oh my god! I'm just like, dog. We can't, we can't make it look easy to bring children to this world and think people are about to change their standards 
right. and be picky. You have to make it look rugged. Make having babies before you're married and able and mentally there to look like 1950. Right. Make if if a, if a woman have a baby against a man's will or men are out here thinking it's cool to just skeet up whoever take all their shoes and socks away and their lotion make them (laughs) they have shoes in them oh yo I'm just like you you gotta make it look ugly yeah you got to got to but they, they put sprinkles on top of everything that's crazy like I re- when I when I was uh, in labor the last time, I think that's when push gifts got popular. My thing is, push gifts happen with celebrities. Push mm-hmm. gifts don't happen with Mark and Becky mm-hmm. that that work nine to five hours. Mm-hmm. Your push gift for having a baby by anybody when you're a regular regular person, okay, is the fact that you made it out the hospital Hello. Healthy with a healthy baby. That's your push gift. I just said that to somebody. I just said that to somebody. Because when my son was born, what, five years ago, that's uh, that That was the first time I had ever heard about a push gift. I didn't know what the fuck that was. What, you want a gift? For, no, no. I'm not participating in this. Right. We ain't getting shit. You, you, you are allowed. This baby's healthy. And y'all get to go home together. Voila. Yes. And then on top of that, <laughs> if you want sprinkles and a cherry and whipped cream on top, I'm a daddy and I'm gonna be here pulling my weight. And I got your back. What? This, you what? got three gifts. You got three gifts. <laughs> the gift that keeps giving, keeps, and then the giving. life, the lifetime gift until they 18 is your tax return. Bingo, hey! bingo. Come on, baby, we win it. Look at all these Come gifts on. that keep happening every single year. Come on. <laughs> okay. Give me my tax credits. Yes. Bingo. Bingo. Come on now. Come on now. You got to prioritize. We ain't worried about... Because, I mean, what a push gift is, what, a purse or uh, a pre- I don't. I don't even know what the fuck the bullshit is. I just know I ain't doing it. Let me tell you. The only gift I wanted after I had that baby was some sleep and some real food. <laughs> that's it oh shit and I, and I ain't get real sleep until a year after I had the last one <laughs> shit and when she not at her daddy house and she here she still sleeps in my back damn, damn so, still so my back. thing is, listen my thing is just be careful what you ask for okay yeah because the personality of the children that you have is a gamble. Uh, it's sure a gamble. Is. Okay. It's a, it's a fucking risk. So what I'm gonna do now is um I'm done with the questions. Okay, I'm done drill teaming you. I'm a <laughs> I'm gonna run through the rest of these messages and then we could close out the show. Anybody that wanna drop another comment so we can run through it, go ahead and drop it now. That is Juice from Chilling with Juice podcast. Check it out on your podcast platforms. Damn, I every single one. Listen, you can check uh, Cozy Room Podcast out on all your platforms. She gets a podcast on all your platforms. I'm gonna run through these messages and uh, yeah. All right, so we got E Roots. Isn't it, isn't that interesting too? You think about like a man being like a farmer when he's like spreading his seed into the soil. Yes. And you would mm-hmm. think like as a farmer, the farmer's like, no, I have a harvest. I have a return on this harvest. I'm gonna keep sprinkling this water here. I'm gonna keep adding the fertilizer. I'm gonna keep making sure that I, you know, make sure the soil is taken care of. Cause I know that this, the, 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 the fruit, the plants, the whatever it is that I'm growing is going to be making me prosperous. And I, I think men should start looking at it that way. Like this is your legacy. This is your child that's going to supersede you you would want like what young Dolph that man understood how to farm you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. absolutely is there a donut in that donut box give me the regular donut give it to me I'll split it with you <laughs> I'm gonna play with that second <laughs> this is how you gotta do your 
kids <laughs> Now, I have ran into a friend that has been in this situation before to where dude has told her that he is not interested at all, 100%. He did not care about the baby or none of that. She kept the baby, and now she expects him to be there and take care and all that to where now... He signed over his rights. It's like, he told you what it was. You thought it was a game. So, it's like, it is what it is. It's a fucked up situation, fucked up topic, but it really happens out here. Some dudes don't want to be fathers. And just because you allowed your womb to this guy doesn't mean that he's obligated to raise your child when he doesn't want it. But, you know, different strokes for different folks. Damn. That's how you know a man is really serious. When he said... Give me the paper and the pen. Yeah, he did that early. Like, I'm not playing with you, lady. I'm not about to go through this. Wow. Damn. I respect it. Yeah, got to. Got to. Hey, I've been listening to your podcast now for a few moments and thought I'd chime in with my own two cents for what it's worth. Appreciate Um, it. I just think that we live in a society in this day and age where the whole concept of accountability... Um, is thrown out the window. We always look to blame something other than ourselves for our own misfortunes and shortcomings. Mm. And this is no different from the topic that you were talking about. If a man does not want to be a dad, then do not have sex. Abstain from (laughs) sex, as hard as that may be. Um, If you don't and you have sex with a woman and she gets pregnant, well, don't put that on the woman. Okay, you didn't want to be a dad and you had the option not to have sex and you still chose to have sex knowing that there was the potential for life. And this is the same vice versa with women who don't want to get pregnant. If you don't want to get pregnant, don't spread your legs. Uh, Got my vote, sir. What if if you didn't spread your legs and he went through the other way? I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Exactly, Chan. This is what I'm saying. Look, right now I'm six months without having sex because I'm the type of person, if we're going to have unprotected sex and you're going to be the person I'm doing it with consistently, you got to have a mean pullout game because I I refuse to get on birth control just so you could come at me. What? That's offensive to me. Why do I have to alter my body and tell it not to ovulate? Or tell my body not to shed the egg that wasn't fertilized every month, which is my period. Why do I have to do that shit? So you could come at me? Ew. Hell fucking no. I'd rather not have a man. Mm Mm-mm. She said ew. Yo, she is hilarious, yo. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Man, a lot of men are not taking birth control out here. They don't take that shit seriously. And I tell my brothers all the time, I don't give a fuck if a bitch says she's on birth control. Do not believe that bitch. Strap up, extra tight, keep a Jimmy in your motherfucking pocket. Do not believe no female that says she's on birth control. Because a lot of these hoes out here be lying. Keep a condom, period. Because a lot of times your pullout game is not that strong, my boy. (laughs) That's true. That is true. And you know the other thing is, Jude? For the people who are out here just stroking on whatever, y'all not scared of AIDS? Y'all not scared of chlamydia? Y'all not scared of super gonorrhea that has no nothing to cure it? Scared of all that shit. Scared of all that shit. All that shit. Oh my god. Ain't no way. That's crazy. They got that beat though. Y'all remember True Blood? Remember the V from the True Blood? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. They got that V spreading seeds. I'm just saying. <laughs> Listen, I'm not. A, I'm not out here to knock men down because I know some really great men. My father is a really great man who did take care of his children, and he was raised by his single his father who lost when he lost his mom at 16 his father stepped up and took care of him and they're like eight they got they got like 16 kids there's a whole bunch of them Jeez. um and Shit. on top of that you know he remarried and made sure that my father had a stepmother even though he didn't get along with her <laughs> but at the same time 
this is, you know, a different era. But it was also an era where men were leaving to take care, you know, leaving leaving the home. Well, the era after that, because this is the 50s, 60s, about the 60s, 70s or so. So, you know, something to think about. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Women. All I'm going to say about birth control is that nobody should be taking birth control. Talk um, about it. The side effects, the long-lasting side effects from prolonged use of uh, said pills includes infertility. Mm. So you might want to think twice before you start popping pills so that you can enjoy a couple of minutes of pleasure because there's real-life ramifications yeah. uh, that mm-hmm. you could feel later on down the road. Uh, not to mention, popping pills doesn't protect you from shit like HPV, which Listen. is running rampant because of this whole free sex and hedonism that we find ourselves in today. Listen. Just saying, doesn't protect you from anything. Eh? <laughs> I should say it doesn't protect you from everything. Yeah. Yeah. What is that green stuff coming out your penis? Oh, it's oh, just slime. Slime? Ew. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. What? Hell no. This is my thing. Like, a lot of people out here are having sex with people that won't even pop their pimple. Yeah. Real like, shit. What? Real shit. If you can't examine my body, why are you in it? Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, make it make sense. All right, we got three more and then we done. Jews tell us why and I think that's something that's a mystery for me because men talk about women that are crazy and they're like man she's crazy and that's the, the all the men that I know that have baby moms that they're like they hate I'm like but you loved her you loved something about her at one yes. time you got to own that tell me mm-hmm. tell me the whole you. story like tell me how much you hate her and then tell me how much you loved about her because something in that also tells you a, a story about you too. When I say you, not you specifically, but the men that I know in my life that would be like, man, I can't stand her. She just, now she gonna try to tell me how to, what time to spend with my daughter. Like, uh, yeah, I remember you was calling her all kinds of trash names and stuff. I don't think it's gonna be that easy. Even though we're adults, we still have feelings. So Juice, I do wanna know, what about your feelings? What happened here? Tell us about your story and the redheaded. <laughs> <laughs> what you love. <laughs> tell us about your story. Uh, okay, all right. I'll, I'll I'll start with the baby mama thing. I never I I, I never bash mine. I never talk bad. I, you know it is what it is. I I loved her as much as I disliked her. Okay. Um, you know we, we 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 were just adults. It didn't work out. We all we all have feelings. You know, people express them differently, but I would never bash them. I love them to death. They're the reason why my babies are here. And, you know what I'm saying, life was given because of, and part of them. But as far as the red-headed uh, uh, the ladies that I used to deal with many, mm-hmm. many moons ago, um, it was a fun time in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, it was an attraction. It was like... It was, like, it was like the ghetto hood rat thing. Like, I wasn't supposed to be doing it, but if he tried a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I, get, I got out the game early. So, you know, yeah, you know, but sh- shouts out to them. Shouts out to those. I don't even know if women still wear red. I don't know what the fuck they do. They do. They, they do. do. Yeah. All right. But so, no, so we good. We good. I just, I just, through the blessings of God, like I said before, through the blessings of God, I never had to have like the ghetto child's mom or whatever that. You know the ghetto hood rats, quote unquote. So you know we we straight, we straight, we we we're, we're we're looking at things differently now. I, I, w- I would never go back to that lifestyle that I used to live. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> it's so true about that uh, having to split homes because what's her name? Portia Williams and her sister. I can't remember her sister's name now. Portia Williams from um, Love and Hip Hop, not Love and Hip Hop, from Real Housewives. Yeah. There's an episode with her and her sister talk about that where the father used to be more so with his new wife and her younger sister after the divorce with or after they separ- she, her father separated from her mom. And you could still see that. I mean, she's a grown 34-year-old or whatever, 36, 7, 38-year-old, whatever woman. And she still feels that pain, you know? So that's real. That's a fact. Mm. That's a fact. It's hard when you have girls because everything that one parent does or one dad does, 
that the other dad doesn't do is kind of like, God damn, I gotta yep. make up for this. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta fill in these gaps. Like I do it, I do it every week. Yeah. I do it every week. Why doesn't my dad do this? Or how come she gets this? I'm just like, dog, I can't make him be, yeah. be that for you because that's yeah. not his place and it's hard because they don't get it. Yeah. But it's, it's work. It's definitely work. Girl, what they're going to do is get, provide a vent session and just a, I got to tell this person how I feel because I need you to know how angry I am and all this other stuff. And it's just, I think it definitely is necessary for people to really get into the vibe of like therapy or like life coaching when it comes down to having relationships. And, you know, even with Kevin and I, like we've, we've not ever gone to therapy. Like we really do work our thing, work our shit out. Like we always say, you know, if it ever came to a situation where we had to, where we grew up and grew apart, it would be very cordial. Like we're best friends first, all the, Mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I even thought about. I remember before I was like, before we start having situations where we start the the pullout method, let me just make sure that I can really (laughs) see you as being my children's father. And I thought really, every person I've been with, I've thought about them that way. Can you be my kid's father? Because I am not for that life. I've always, okay, I've always thought about that when I meet men that I, before I even make a, have a relationship with them. Mm Mm-hmm. If if that happened, would I be okay with it? It's always that, except for Anya's dad, because I knew like, sir, you are a speed bump in my life. Let's go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's, yeah. let's get this in and and be done with it because he he wasn't fully into who he was going to be yet. And I felt like it would be selfish of me to think of him in that way for my purpose alone. Right. So um, it's definitely a responsibility factor to be like, if that happened as a possibility, is this person okay with yeah. being that for you? And I don't, I don't think a lot of women do that. I'm sorry, that took me out, sis. I'm done. <laughs> that took me out. <laughs> oh my god. Hey guys, I don't even know how to start this statement uh, or jump into this conversation. Um, but Definitely. I can honestly say that I was a toxic baby mom. Ooh, um, I make no excuses for my behavior. Um, but I felt that my behavior fit that situation in that point in the breakdown of our ability to communicate as parents, mm. you know? So, you know, it's not always the baby dad, you know, it doesn't matter who starts it. It doesn't matter who causes the worst pain it really just matters on if you guys can come together to end whatever toxicity that is there and um so yeah I can say that I was a toxic baby mom um I was vengeful I my mouth was ridiculous you know I would say some shit that I probably would never even say to my worst enemy because I was so angry and essentially not getting my way in things that I felt were important Look mm. at that juice. You got a confession mm. out here. Mm. Mm. Cuz man, listen, I I I I've, I've been down the road when a when a motherfucker just say anything out their mouth to <sighs> anything. Like just say some shit that 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 they know or they feel like they know is going to like like really eat you up. Mhm. Like yeah, I I I've, I've been I've been I've been threatened to be taken down to child support first, first first and foremost. First and foremost. When I have gotten threatened to be taken down to child support, I I will meet you. I will pick you up. We can go there together. <laughs> we can do this as a unit. Yeah. Don't threaten me with a good time. Don't threaten me with a good you time. You know why? Because a lot of men and women don't understand that child support is the bare minimum. Bare minimum. Bet- between two parents of what would equate to what this child needs right compared to y'all income it is right. not child support because um i'm gonna get more money it's child support because y'all two can be an adult to decide with each other how much money needs to be shared so mm-hmm. you're going to pay a government system money from your work 
so we can tell you how much money y'all gonna split between y'all child like mm-hmm. it's really it's really ignorant mm-hmm. but a lot of men and women do struggle with consistency and pride and ego and thinking holding financial aid hostage of your child that you share mm-hmm. is worth me not doing right by my child because you telling me when I have to. Right. And it's it's dumb. So I I got to a point where I'm just like, there's no point in having one of my kids' dad on child support because we got to a point where we can agree like the purpose is to be great parents for her. Right. In order for us to be great parents for her with options is to take you completely out the system's hands and just provide for her and Bingo. that's what we do right now he just I just allow him there's no day set in place but every month we agree that this amount of money from you goes into her bank account mm-hmm. and he sends it to me and I put it in her bank account because the reality is she doesn't need for nothing and she never wants for anything that she doesn't get from both of us both of us have our own house we have our own car we pay our utilities we're responsible and she has room and space and toys and people around her that care about her well-being in both houses Mm -hmm. we're just not together and I feel like until a man and a woman gets to a point where they can do that and there's no drama and there's no friction and there's no just like nastiness within that there is no problem right I agree with that but the other side to that is you can't do that with everybody yeah sure can so yeah that's 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 wild oh a little confession cause young me <laughs> did have a little bit of killer in her it's the Scorpio thing I don't know but I was definitely about that life also <laughs> not about that life so I would talk myself out of it but like girl you can't go to jail you got time for that you got things to do so you know it's that that you know it's the tip in the scale of knowing like how crazy is this person that I'm gonna pick to be my children's father how crazy is this person I'm picking to be my children's mother how can I deal with their scale of crazy is the scale of crazy good like if, if anything happens to my child I know she'll go to the ends of the earth to make sure that she's taking care of my child because that is also an issue and then for the fathers you know will this man go to the ends of the earth to take care of this child too that's a question too how how is a parent willing to sacrifice themselves for their children and that's the question about, about being you know ready to be a mom or a dad too yeah agreed agreed that's crazy all right spicy I'm glad that that statement came up you know um i think how i dealt with my children's father because i can't bring myself to say baby dad my children's father <laughs> um was learned behavior i watched my mom struggle for years with my biological father for communication and for the bare minimum and when i felt that he was not just disrespecting me but disrespecting his children I became volatile you know what I mean so my reaction to his behavior could have been carried a lot better not only for myself but not to begin yet notice the um the trauma that I suffered as a kid you know so I definitely had to calibrate my ass back and figure this shit out and communicate or find a way for us to communicate better. Shouts out to Spicy. Mm. Growth. That's nothing but yeah. growth. You know something, KS? I wish me and my kid's father continued our best friend relationship. You know, we were married for, as of Monday, we were married for 12 years, but separated for five. And... We started out as like really good friends. He was my biggest playmate. He knew all my secrets, I knew all him, all his. And our marriage wasn't great, but he did love his kids at some point. And I think we both were going through our own issues um, in the middle of our marriage and grew apart, you know. I married him at 18, he was 28. You know, my ideals are gonna be different at 33 now than they were then. And I think that was a very hard thing. 
I think we both served a purpose for each other in that chapter in our life. And when we no longer could fit together, we fell apart. You know, it's it sucks. It really does suck. Man, yeah, that sounds tough. Gamble, man. It's all a gamble. It is a risk. Life gone life, whether you want it to or not. You ain't never lied about that shit. <laughs> you know something, um, Chan? I'm so glad that you and your kid's father could come together and find a consensus for each other. You know, me and my kid's father have never been able to be on that same page. You know, I'm going to give you just a couple examples. Uh, I relocated. We lived in New York and New Jersey. I relocated to New Jersey once we decided to separate. Upon trying to put on utilities, I found out that my ex-husband for years was using my name for utilities. He ran up bills that were into the thousands and I only had $15,000 to relocate. I had to pay about $5,000 just to get the bare necessities for me and my children. Upon calling my children's father and letting them know this, him know the situation, he pretty much told me to figure it the fuck out. He was in the DR and wanted nothing to do with us. At that point, my mouth became extremely disrespectful, which was not warranted. I should have just shut up and figured it out. Jesus Christ. But you know, in the in the heated moment of that, and you know you have the kids that you share together and somebody could be so self-centered about something that's very important. Yeah. I understand why her mouth went off. But that's I, like I can't I can't fault her for that. Yeah, that's like situations you you can't you can't be like, okay, I'm gonna be calm. All right, you enjoy your trip over there. Right. Well, I'll try to figure out how to get running clean water in the house for our kids. Like it's hard. Yeah, that's it's crazy. hard. But you know, like I said, one of my children's fathers, we have peace. Um, the other one, it's not hostile, it's not drama, but mm. it's it's a lot of I don't I don't see him as an equal. I don't see him as an equal parent because he hasn't shown me any thing responsibility wise that he can handle so I could feel comfortable for him to be her dad right um and that's because he lives his life as if he's still like 16 and somebody else is taking care of the important stuff Mm -hmm. um so he put himself listen to me juice he put himself on child support oh when she was three months Ask me if he's paid it. So hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. So he took it up. He took it upon himself to, I guess, do the honorable thing. To Listen. end up not doing the honorable thing. Listen, let me do this. Let me do the math for you. What the fuck? Let me do the math for you. Okay. Ninety-six no. times six. Jesus Christ. Okay. Right now. Her father owes me $25,344 in back child support. And it grows every month. And he has never paid. What the f- I don't understand that. This is my thing. Not only does he have one child with me, he has two other kids. Now, is his two other kids on child support for him? I don't know. I don't talk to those women. But at the same time, my thing is like, as a man, when you're done playing in life and you want to set yourself up correctly in life, mm-hmm. you're going to be calling me after you have your life set in life and you have a career and you only getting some of what you need to be getting. Mm-hmm. Why, why would you put yourself in a hole before right. you get yourself correct? Right, and and it, and it's to the point where it's not even that okay. Maybe he doesn't pay his child support, but he makes sure she has what she needs often or all the time or consistently. Mm-hmm. It's rare. So if he is like, "Hey, does Anya need anything?" I have to be like, "Okay, let me just go ahead and bank on this is the moment where I get all of the things that she may possibly need in the next three months." So right. when when I be like okay she needs shoes I buy two shoes at the top at the same time um I tell them to get two shoes and I get them the size that she's in now and a half size to the size that she's going to be 
because right. he, he's so inconsistent that I don't know when when his help will come around again. Right. You know, yeah. and, and it shouldn't be like that. Like, my thing is, like, as a parent, how do you have the audacity to wake up every day and breathe and eat and yeah. and go about your day and go to sleep at night and you didn't check on your kid? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't. I, I don't know how the men do it. I, I, I really don't. I mean, and, and, not, and not for nothing, it's men and women that do this. Because there's some mothers, like I was saying earlier, who are not motherly. They don't check in on their kids. They know that they left their kids with their dad. They don't call them every day. Um, mm-hmm. A birthday come around, they might even be on their Facebook and be like, happy birthday. You know, there's no... Mm-hmm. There's no feeling of this is my mom. It's more so like, oh yeah, that's my mom over there. Right. But there's no connection. And my thing is like, if it's like that, then my a lot of the times I would rather it be nothing. Yeah, shit, might as well be nothing. Yeah, because it's hard. It's harder to explain to a kid like, I don't know, they just not ready or they just not like the other person that you feel like does it correctly. Or, you know, eventually one day they might get better. And I, 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 I pick up a lot of that slack, but at the same time, I don't throw dirt on who he is. Right. It's, it's more so like, if he can't do it, I'm going to do it. If I can't do it, somebody that cares about you on my side going to help me get it done. And um, it's just not worth the, the yelling, the, the anger you feeling uh helpless it's just like okay let's let's get it done let's make sure she has what she needs right um so that's just something to think about when when men you know think they want to be dads and drop the ball for a long time i just say don't give up on anybody don't you know tell a man that you never gonna be or you ain't because People hear that and they will act accordingly. Oh yeah, you know they will, they will act accordingly. Yeah, don't don't give them a standard of being. Just be like, okay. Just be like, okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like That's even when you want to cuss them out, just be like, okay. So yeah, just um, like, all right. Spicy uh, got a couple of messages left, and then we gonna close out the show. I appreciate everybody for dropping comments and staying and sharing the show. Oh, that is absolutely. Uh, Juice from Chilling with Juice podcast. I am Sham from Cozy Room podcast, and she gets a podcast. And the topic is what we talked about today, but everything around that we talked about also. Um, we do not agree with the women going against the grain of a man specifically saying he doesn't want kids but at the same time we both believe that it's a woman's and a man's responsibility to to handle that Mm -hmm. so I'm gonna play these messages and then we get out of here Juice you've been doing so good yo you I I love this yo I'm not gonna lie to you I do love this Yes, guys don't even get me started on child support okay (laughs) I'm so glad you know the universe sent me to the chat so I have three children with my ex-husband. When it was t- time for us to go to child support because in our divorce decree, he said that the cap was going to be at $600 a month for each kid. Look, I'm not a greedy bitch. I'm not, okay? I hustle. I work 12-hour shifts. I do my thing. I ask for nothing. There was a point where me and my children were living in a fucking motel because their dad, that was some other shit. But anyway, I digress. This man... We sold both of our properties equating to about $750,000. We had joint saving accounts for the children so that money can be put into it. When we finally decided to completely separate it and before my ass even got to New Jersey, he had withdrawn $28,000 out of our account. Okay, when it came time to go to child support, he didn't work. He moved all his money to another account. So he pays $250 biweekly for three children. What? What? Fuck my boy. You know what's so crazy, Juice? Men like that end up getting old in age and needing a kidney or yep. needing something mm-hmm. that only a blood relative can give that mm-hmm. has the same blood type 
and usually it ends up being their children who they dogged out. Mm-hmm. Sure does. That's so crazy. But know what kills me the most about the children father and the and the children mother situation is the amount of bashing that goes on. Yeah. That's what blows my mind is what is the need to bash each other to relationships that you guys built together throughout your marriage? That's what kills me. You know, um, I never understood that. That I never understood. Like, is it, is it ego? Is it pride? I I, I could never wrap my head around that. So that's my question to the group. All the above. Yeah, definitely all of that. All the above, man. What was that show from the 80s? Oh, (laughs) <laughs> oh, yeah. that. that's all that that's all that oh my yeah. god messy messy all right last message i'm spicy sidebar the reason i put him on child support was because when i was accepting the 600 a month just off of our personal agreement he would deduct money from child support based off the items and food that he needed to buy while the child children were on his visit so he would send me emails talking about oh i spent 30 dollars on clothes for the kids because you didn't send them with a bag so i'm deducting it from child support oh i took them to the movies and had pizza uh, so i'm deducting that from the child support like so that was my reason from taking him to child support court because you were just doing asshole shits to make life even more difficult for me because you were hoping I would fail and that I would come back instead of level up, you know? So that was my reason. Oh my God. Um, having a good nut, the side mm. effects can also be having an asshole for your kid's father. Yep. Next message is from Tierra. Hey, um, it's Tierra. Hey guys, I know you guys are trying to get out of here, but I just wanted to say right quick, um, Spicy, it don't sound like to me that you were being toxic. Uh, listening to these stories, it sounds like you were justified in <laughs> in, yeah, in getting in his ass the way you were. And maybe you probably said some hurtful things, but you, you know, when you're being hurt, hurt people hurt people. So when he's doing, he, he did all that messed up stuff to you, I, 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 I don't think you... <laughs> I don't know. I kind of feel like if he was going off in his ass, he probably deserved it. He deserved it that shit. Yeah. That's all I got to say about that. Yes. Yeah, Agreed. 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 Well, thank you, Spicy, for sharing. Thank you, Tierra. Thank, thank everybody. You. Look at that. The average Joe done sat in here the whole show. The whole the show. show. The whole show. Appreciate you, Spiritual Alliance. What's up? Denzel. What's up? Um, this is a good collab, Juice. Hey, listen, listen. When you told me to step into your office, I knew it was gonna be fire. Listen, I said we gotta initiate this man. So, um, I, oh, I, oh, I'm here. Oh, I'm listen. here. Oh, I'm about to. I'm about to run havoc. I'm about to run havoc. Listen, stereo okay? is here. It is easy for us podcasters to use. You're going to have your own MP3 or MP4 to use. I'll have my own. You can call it something completely different and use it on the show as a bonus. I know I am. Uh, Oh, you know I am. Listen, tomorrow night I will be here with the Average Joe podcast, Baby Uh, Daddy Chronicles. Um, I think we're doing it at nine tomorrow. Okay. All right. Well, Joe, uh, if you listen to this, somebody remind me and send me a text. Don't worry. I'll be here. Okay. So we'll be on here having our own topic for Saturday night so if y'all want to come back tomorrow night we'll be on here uh, you can find Chillin' with Juice podcast on all of your podcast platforms he does a, he gives a great show with uh, more people on his show giving uh, great feedback okay he digs into mm-hmm. some topics you can find Cozy Room Podcast on your podcast platforms you can find She Gets a Pod on your podcast platforms um, at she gets a pod at cozy moon pod. What's your ad name on Twitter and IG? Uh, Twitter is I'm chilling. That's I M C H I I L I N. And on Instagram is chilling with juice pod. All right, y'all. It's been great. Thank y'all for coming through. We appreciate you. Juice, enjoy your night and your weekend. Say no more, baby. I'll see y'all Peace. tomorrow night, though. See All y'all. Right.
When you visit Arizona, time is measured in moments, not minutes. Like the moment you see the Grand Canyon for the first time. Visit a new state of mind. Learn more at hereyouareaz.com.